So Google just released NanoBanana, which is one of the most powerful image generation models that we've ever seen. For example, you can create images that are animated as well as super realistic and add in all sorts of fantasy elements as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to utilize NanoBanana effectively, as well as combine it with leading video gen models like VO3 and pull it all together in Rosebud in order to create a fully playable narrative-driven video game. You are first going to start by going to Google's AI Studio and prompting the chat to create an image that you would like. For this example, I'm going to create an animated image of the characters of a popular show called The Summer I Turned Pretty, and I'm going to ask it to create it in an episode game style play. I'm also going to upload sample media in order to have the reference photo that I want. However, you can also completely generate from scratch and you'll still get amazing results. And then I'm going to let it run. As you can see, I got a great generated image that looks a lot like the reference photo. So I'm going to download this and head over to Rosebud in order to start generating my videos and my game. What you need to do is go to rosebud.ai slash gen and you'll be taken to this landing page that is tailored for creating video games. The first thing that you want to do is say your scene. So for example, my first shot will be and upload a reference image in order to get started from. You don't have to upload a reference image, in which case the model will send you four kinds of different images here that you can start prompting from. But in this case, because I run very specific animation, this is how I'm going to do it. Now, once you select the animation, you wait a few seconds in order to get your first video shot. So once it's generated, you can see that there's two different views here. So this is a view of the current scene that you're generating. And then this is the view of the full game that you will have, including the choices that you can make. Once we have the first shot done, you can start adding in branching narratives here. For example, I want to add in a here to grab eye. And you want to be really descriptive here in order for the AI to really understand what you're going for. And while that's generating, I can add in a different branch where and starts gearing up. And you can generate simultaneously. Another cool thing is that you can switch between generation models in order to make the most effective use of your credits or their capabilities. VO3 is great for cinematic shots and animations. You might choose Cedrans Pro in order to minimize your credit usage, or you might choose different things for audios. Once your branching narratives are generated, you can see here that this is what you will get as a result, where you get a description of the story and then the options to choose between your favorites. If you want to keep prompting from any of the branches, you should go to it and start describing your prompts right away. He is In the meantime, there are a few UI fixes that you can implement as well. For example, instead of um, having this descriptive text over the buttons, you can go back and edit the titles in order to make this look more user-friendly for your player. So instead of saying she remembers the sad memory and starts tearing up, um, I could write she thinks this is yeah. The AI wouldn't understand this when you're initially producing the video, however, if your user is actually playing this game and they know the storyline of the movie or the show by which it's inspired, it will be very easily understood what is happening and they will be able to choose the choice that makes most sense to them. After humor edits, you basically have a running game and you can work on changing the code or making sure the narratives match all the time. In order to make changes to the code, you can click this button up here and talk to Rosie AI, which is our designated chatbot that helps you change the code of the game in order to make it more friendly or match your vision more. For example, you can set it up so that you have the choices pop up at a later time in the scene, as well as change kind of the UI of this box. And you can also see all the video assets that you generated in the assets tab, 
where you can copy their URL and open them in a new tab if you want to download them or reference them back to the chatbot. Also, you can use our code tab where you can select the tabs that you want to change and you can always click them or unclick them. It's noteworthy that this is where the AI chatbot will, this is what the AI chatbot will be reading when you ask it to change a prompt. So you always want to make sure that the main um, and the story parts are ticked if you want to make sure that the whole video um, platform is, or the whole game is actually getting tweaked. So let's take a look at what this would look like for a hyper-realistic horror game next. For this, I used ChatGPT to generate descriptive the game. All I asked ChatGPT to do was to put together a story map for my game and it immediately came up with this interactive scene. You have the initial setup and then you have the different branching narratives with, for example, a journal that is cursed in some way and then it also branches out the paths that you can take from each of these. So this should make your creation journey much easier if you don't want to take the time to think about all of these things and would rather focus on the aesthetics. So I'm going to start a new project just by the page again. For this project, I downloaded a photo of three friends and I asked Nano Banana to put them in front of a lake house. I'm going to take this photo into Rosebud and make the sun set. We got our first scene and we're going to continue creating the branching narratives. Let's take a look. Well, the first choice could be to explore the house inside or stay outside and go stargazing. One of the prompts suggested by ChatGPT is to find a journal on the table in the living room or find it and decide to leave it there. I am first going to generate a scene where they find a journal on the living room table and then make the choice whether to explore it and read it or whether to leave it there and continue looking around. This is pretty much how you get started creating your own story-driven video game. So let me know any questions in the comments and feel free to explore Rosebud as much as you'd like. Thank you so much for watching. We put out new AI video tutorials all the time, so make sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoyed this.